The following program is sponsored by the friends and partners of Run With Fire Ministries. Hi, my name is Joy Fields, and you're watching All Together Now with my mom and dad. <laughs> You're watching all together. And you're watching all together now. And you're watching all together now. Talk about worship, salvation, and healing. And you're watching all together. God's gonna get a hold of you. Did you hear me? I said God's gonna get a hold of you. Get ready because your life is about to get wrecked. It's about Jesus. Founded on salvation. Worship and healing. We run with fire. Sounds of revival, intimate worship, and fresh word. Live from the Run With Fire studio in Orlando, Florida. All together now. With Roy and Melanie Fields. And welcome to another edition of All Together Now. I'm your host, Roy Fields. And you know, today is going to be a very special program. We have a very special guest that I interviewed in Kansas City, Missouri. And I want to take you to that studio. But before I do, I want to give you the opportunity to call in today. If you have a prayer request that you'd like us to believe God for with you, call that number at the bottom of your screen right now, 863-815-4477. Or you can write us today, P.O. Box 896, Kathleen, Florida, 33849. We'd love to hear from you. All right, let's get into it. Today, I have a very special guest on the program named Laura Hackett Park. And she's one of the main worship leaders at International House of Prayer. And I heard her sing my song, In the Presence of Angels. I was so overwhelmed by how the presence of God was beaming off that television I said, Melanie, I have got to meet this lady and find out who she is. So without further ado, I want to take you right now to our friend's studio at World Revival Church in Kansas City to go meet Laura Hackett Park. Let's go there now. Laura, it's so good to have you here. Thank you. I, uh, I first got an email from somebody that sent me a link. They said, Roy, you got to check this out. And I'm like, okay. So I click on it. And here's 25,000 people singing this song that I wrote. I'm going, who is this lady? <laughs> so I call up a friend of mine, Jay Thomas, who you know. Yeah. And he says, that is the legendary Laura Hackett. <laughs> and I said, my God. And when you first sang, I got to tell you this, I remember in my heart going, this is real. It wasn't just about my song. It was like, this girl is a worshiper. How did that start in you? The song or the worship? No, the worship. How did you become a worshiper like that? I mean, I grew up singing, you know, from age two, age eight, get on the fireplace and sing my songs. And, but, um. I, yeah, so I feel like the Lord marked me with worship at a young age, but really around 12 or 13, I started singing the Bible. Our, our pastor at the time, Mike Bickle, at our church was encouraging us to just open the Bible and sing, and so that's what I would do. I just, this is IHOP, right? International well, House of Prayer. It was before IHOP, yeah. but yeah, so th- it's become IHOP. But we, I would just sit at the piano, open my Bible, play simple chords, you know, I can only play really in C and D mm. or whatever, and just play simple chords and just sing straight from the text and wow. that really started to awaken something in me and hearing did the voice like, of the Lord and did you like have those moments where you're just alone at the piano with the Lord and you're just like it's you and him there's nobody there for sure I've that's really what drew my heart into yeah. worship leading because it was a place where I could actually hear God and feel him talk to me and feel the emotion of his heart through music you know yeah. the gift of music and so I can tell, I can tell in singers, I'm sure you're the same, you can tell when somebody's been with Jesus and somebody's just trying to sing the song and yeah. trying to get through it. And I kind of sense that in you that there's been more of an intimacy with Jesus in the personal time of your worship than before you come into the corporate. Yeah, so how, I'm definitely not a performer. Come on. <laughs> I went to college, I went to conservatory music and I tried to do the vocal performance route. Mm-hmm. 
And my teachers would be like, you have a great voice, but you're just not a great performer. <laughs> and so I, it was good. It was good for me to go kind of reach for that and just see, you know. But um, I, through that experience in university, I just felt like, man, I really am called to just worship. Like, that's just who I am. And what, what, is, what does prophetic worship mean to you? What, give me that definition, because I hear that the terms yeah. a lot. What does prophetic worship mean to you? Yeah, I think it's simple. I mean, Revelation 19 says the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So it's someone who can hear what Jesus is saying, you know, and he speaks through so many different ways, through pictures, through other people, and mostly, I think, through the Bible. Mm -hmm. So I, I really believe singing the word and then in the midst of singing the word, you feel the Holy Spirit highlighting like a specific phrase or passage, and you just sing that, you know. And, um, Very spontaneous. Yes. But I think sometimes he uses stuff we've prepared too, and mm -hmm. he highlights it in a sure. moment. So, yeah, but I, I really feel like singing the word and just knowing, like, f being connected to what the Lord is saying to me is what is prophetic. And so, yeah. Prophetic worship, it can be simple. It can be like you can do your whole normal set list and add in that one phrase you just keep hearing him say, you know, and I, I think that's pr being prophetic. Yeah, and, and it's good because people need to hear that in the songs. Yeah. I mean, everything we sing in worship really is prophetic. We're yeah. declaring not only what's already taken place or what's happening now, but what is to come. Yeah. And that comes from the heart, doesn't it? It's yeah. not something that you can, you can plan and prepare it, mm -hmm. but when you finally get up live, maybe you can correct me on this, but when you finally get up live and you're in front of all these people, you just go with it. For sure. Right? And sometimes you throw yeah. the list away, right? For sure. Yeah. yeah. And I think he, like for me, I would say like 90% of the time, the Holy Spirit highlights something that I've already been talking to him about. Mm -hmm. And then there's those times where like randomly I start singing something I've never heard before or, right. you know, that random verse like, did I ever read that even? <laughs> but most of the time it's the stuff that I'm just talking to him about. And then mm. he's like, hey, this is for this right now, you know. Let me change this up. What, do you, what, is, your, um, what is your definition of revival? Oh, that's a good question. Man. What does it mean to you? I mean, I feel like revival is about so much more than a meeting, Come obviously. On. And um, being a worship leader, too, it's like I hunger for not just a good meeting where everyone's up clapping mm -hmm. and jumping or whatever involved, but that where people go away and it changes the way that they talk to their family and the way that they relate to God and the way that they think. So I feel like revival is when, you know, the whole, a whole city, a whole church, a whole region, it starts talking to God every day, it starts like coming into a true relationship. Yeah. And, um, and it affects their behavior. You know. How do you cultivate that? I mean, I, I really believe one of the most important ways is to stay connected to the Word and the Holy Spirit. So it's not just like reading your Bible and checking off like, oh, I did, I did my Bible reading plan today, mm. but it's reading your Bible and talking to the Lord in the midst of it. What did you mean when you said that? And, and waiting on Him and listening to Him. I just feel like we, the, the Word of God is what keeps us grounded, you know, in the midst of I don't know, visitations and encounters and like there's so much that can be misconstrued in that, you know. Right. And so I, I feel like when we stay connected to the word, it really helps birth something that like really is lasting and changing. It's important. I believe it's important for especially the youth today. Yeah. To really get themselves buried in the word, especially people that want to worship. Yes. Or to do what you do. Yeah. If there's no foundation you don't really have anything to fall back on. Yeah. So obviously the word is very important to you. Uh, spending personal intimacy with God is very important to you. Yeah. Now, let's talk about when you get up on that stage, okay, and you've got thousands of people out there. How do you, how do you cultivate the corporate setting with worship? Like how do you, What's it like for Laura Hackett to get behind the piano and she's singing to the Lord, but she's also leading these people with her? Yeah. What's that like? Man, What's I, going through your mind? What's going through your heart? Well, I really feel like music is such a gift. Mm. And I believe it's a like, scriptural, God-given gift. Yeah. And music, I really believe music at this point in history is really important. And, but um, when, so when I'm up there, it's like I've prepped musically. I haven't just like, I'm not just... Like I'm practicing at home, I'm practicing with my band, and like we take it seriously because it's kind of like having a toolbox. It's like I'm gonna have this like large toolbox, and then the Holy Spirit can pull from whatever 
I've cultivated, you know. So it's like you're building a house with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I like to be prepared musically, and then from there I can move with him wherever. But, um, I mean, I, corporately, I just want everyone to be focused on the Lord. Like, I don't want to be a distraction, but I also don't want to not, like, give clear leadership because I want it to be so easy for people to mm. just begin to talk to him. And so I like I try to start with songs that don't talk about us too much, that more talk about him, so we just get our minds off ourselves, focus on him. And then from there, it's just kind of a Holy Spirit free for all. You like to he sing wants. songs to him, don't you? Yes. <laughs> yeah. We've got to we've got to get our worship leaders to sing to him. Yeah. We we do sing a lot about him, but yeah. we should be singing to him. Yeah. I don't know right. about you, but for me, it makes it more real for me when I'm singing to him about how awesome he is, Amen. how wonderful. And I hear that in your worship. Yeah. In fact, what I want to do right now is we're going to head over and we're going to go to, I think this is, where is this now? It's at... One Thing Conference? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kansas City, yes. Missouri, yes. USA, because yes. we're all of our international people. And uh, we're going to take a look. Watch this right now. This is Laura Hackett singing In the Presence of Angels. This is a realm of your glory. This is a realm of your grace. I can feel your mighty power, and it's moving in this place. Let faith arise. It's a person together. God's glory on their wings Like the voice 
That was powerful. I, I, I got to tell you, you are probably the only person in the world, in my opinion, that has ever done that song right. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Because it was pure, it. it's real, and I felt like when you sang it that you were actually in the presence of angels, like you were in the glory of God. Yeah. I think with all my heart that music plays a very strong role in every generation. Yeah. How does music play in this generation now? We're here now. Yeah. What's the role? I think that this is a unique time in history with just the way technology and music has come together. You know, more people on the planet right now can sing and play an instrument than ever before in all of history. Yeah. And it's not just like because there's more people, it's the percentage. And yeah. it's through GarageBand, YouTube, the obsession with becoming a musical performer. The quality too, right? Yeah, like it's just every, like more than ever before in all of history. And obviously that's the Lord. You know, yeah. That's not the yeah. enemy, you know. No, no, no. That's not like pop music and the devil. It's like, right. this is the Lord stirring something up in this generation. I really believe it's preceding his second coming, that the Lord wants music to proceed. And there's so many scriptures where it's like, and they sang and then he responded, yeah. you know, and then he surrounds his throne with music. I mean, there's just so many scriptures and he, we're commanded to sing. And yeah. so I really believe this generation, he's calling forth music and worship and music together. The gift, the, the vehicle of music as a medium to express to God and to hear his heart and him to express to people. And there seems to always be a sound before revival. Yeah. Have you noticed that? For sure. Every move of God has its own sound. Yeah, and the songs that carry it. So that's for a purpose. For sure, yeah. So what do you see in this, like, let's say the next five years from this taping, what do you see happening? You see another move of God coming across America, the yes. world? Yes. What do you see? Well, I just believe if the Lord is stirring up this generation with music and singing like never before, then He's going to then he's bringing something and mm -hmm. he wants songs. And, and I really believe he wants the church to be the leaders in creativity. Absolutely. You know, like we don't have to be held back anymore because somebody else made up a beat. It's like, no, God gave, God gave right. creativity. You know, the devil, he can only take it and make it counterfeit. He, you know, he can't the, create, you know, yeah. only God can create. Yeah. And we're, we're connected to the most creative being. I mean, we should be, we should be leading the charge in creative music and, excellence and and it, there's just so much but even in that like god is god's going to use simple songs because he wants everyone he wants every voice he's the originator yeah and i just think it's interesting in revelation one it says that the sound of jesus's voice is the sound of rushing waters and that's the the sound of rushing waters is the full sound spectrum all the highs the mids the lows and then in revelation 19 it says the bride's voice has become mature and it becomes the sound of rushing waters wow. And I really believe the Lord's waiting for every voice, every nation, tribe, and tongue to really lift up their sound. And then that, that's what he's going to answer. And like, we're going to be a bride made ready. And I really believe music and worship and a, a sound specifically um, is what he's waiting for and what he's, draw, what he's stirring the earth with. And so. Have you seen healing when uh, you've led worship? Have you had ever had testimonies come in of people being healed? Yeah. I have. There was a season at the House of Prayer for a couple of years where every service that we would do, people would get healed. And nobody laid hands on them, I'm sure, right? Yeah, sometimes they did. And the then, worship. yeah, sometimes it would just be yeah. like, you know, ears popping open. And I, I like, I want more of that, so much more of that. I would hear, I would hear in Lakeland back in 08 oh, all the so time, much. people would come up and they'd say, yeah. during the worship, during the worship, during the worship. So to me, there's no doubt in my mind that worship plays a very vital part in this generation. And I'm excited, sure. Laura, for you and what God's going to give you new sounds for this coming generation right now because you're it. You're you're in that flow. You're in the vein of what God's doing. Amen. I'm excited for you. I want that too. <laughs> it's, com it's coming. There's no doubt. Yeah. All right. Let me ask you this question. We got a, just a couple minutes to wrap this up, but um, you're traveling all over the world. You're about to have a baby. You, mm -hmm. you got married, was it last year, two last years year. ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Last year. It's crazy flying like a mama and That's singing awesome. like a mama, <laughs> yeah, right? I'm a mama now. Mama, <laughs> mama son. Um, wh what's the next five years look like for Laura Hackett? Well, obviously I'm going to be invested in my family. Of course. Love, love my girl. Um, they come first. Yeah, mm. but um, I really, I really feel called 
to this next generation. And I, I really, I'm, we're, my husband, Jonas Park, and I, we're asking God for songs specifically right now. We're, we're doing a lot of writing, and we're asking the Lord for songs that would capture a heart of a generation mm. to give themselves to the Lord. You know, and we're just going to keep writing, and He can do whatever He wants with them, and we're going to keep recording. And Awesome. But yeah, that's my plan, is just to keep worshiping and writing, and I, I like, I just ache for this generation to be connected to Jesus. And That's so. awesome. So great having you. Thank, Thank you so you much, so Laura. Much. Glad to have you here. Listen, I want you to get a hold of Laura Hackett's CD. There it is on the screen. You can call our number right now, 877-736-7664. I want to get the CD, Shout Your Name. That song you just saw on the video and everything, it is available to you right now. Be a blessing. Send in a love gift for your love gift of $35 today. I'm going to add my other two CDs to that. And we want to bless you and get it in your hands just as soon as possible. Thank you so much. Laura, thanks again. Thank you. Glad to have you. We'll be right back to All Together Now. I know you've been waiting for this and it's finally here. It's the new live DVD and CD stand up by Roy Fields. I mean, as we were traveling around the world, Roy was writing these songs right in the midst of revival. And we were like, let's get them on CD. So we went to Binghamton, New York in this live worship experience and we, got, we caught this live atmosphere. I mean, the CD is 14 songs, the DVD, almost three hours of this live worship experience plus all these behind the scene interviews about Roy's life and how God touched him early on. We just want to get this into your hands. Call that number that's on your screen right now. It's just a love gift of $35 or more. We'll get into your home, into your car, wherever the presence of God can touch you. We now return to All Together Now. And welcome back to the program. You know, it's powerful to see the relationship that Laura has with Jesus. You can tell that it's real in the secret place as it is out in the public in front of people. And I wanna take these next few seconds just to share with you how important it really is to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't even be talking to you if Jesus hadn't changed my life. And I wanna give you that opportunity today. You know, all you have to do is open up your heart, open up your life and say, God, please come in and change me. We can't do this on our own. We need help. We need a savior. Mankind needs a savior. So I'm gonna ask you right now today, would you just do me a favor? Would you lift your hands like this with me? And would you close your eyes and from your heart, just repeat what I say, but don't just say it just to say it. Say it from your heart today. Just say this, dear Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I believe you died on the cross and you rose again. Come and change my heart. I receive your forgiveness today. Lord, I'm sorry for all I've done to you. I'm sorry for all I've done to others and to myself. I ask you to come now and be the Lord of my life. Jesus Christ, I make you the Lord and Savior of my life now. In Jesus' name, I believe it and I receive it. Amen. 
It is just that simple. My friend, I believe with all my heart, if you prayed that prayer, you are saved. And we are going to spend eternity in heaven together. It's not some fairy dust thing off into the, you know, the daydream world. This is real stuff. Life and death. And you just made an awesome decision. And if you did pray that prayer, I want you to call that number at the bottom of your screen today and tell us, Roy, I just made that prayer with Jesus and I gave him my life. We want to hear from you. You know, I get letters from you all the time and I so appreciate it. We read every single one. We do everything we can to try to reply. And I want you to know today is a brand new day for you. We want you to keep on watching all together now. Don't forget to tell people to go to runwithfire.tv where you can watch not only today's program, but any program you might have missed before. And there are even extended interviews. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Keep watching every single day that you can. And make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Keep running with fire. Keep your eyes on Jesus. And we'll see you next week. Same time, same channel. God bless you. Bye-bye now. The preceding program was paid for by the friends and partners of Run With Fire Ministries.